if uh, Mike is unable to go this week, who are some other D tackles that, that can step up? In, in addition to Ty Leak and Ty, like Hero Kunu, for example, who are some guys that might step up? Yeah, I think Hero has um, made a lot of progress. He really has. He he made a big play um, last week, I think, right? Like a third down stop on a running play. So um, he's a guy I look at, you know, Jaden McKenzie's got a lot of experience too, you know. So he's he's got that experience that you need to be able to count on in a tough situation. Uh, Nathan Baird, far left, Cleveland.com. We talked to you a lot about the attributes that Sonny's had that have made him such a good fit at nickel. What can make him equally strong at Bandit if he's playing there for Lathan the rest of this way? And does he give you anything that Lathan didn't? You know, Lathan um, had really gotten better. You know, he was getting better all the time. I, f I feel feel terrible for him to to be out right now. But Sonny, um, he's taller. <laughs> I mean, you know, he has he has uh, range. Um, he has. A lot of experience, you know, we were able to gain him that uh, cover experience at the nickel position, covering a, a slot in the open field, which is uh, a difficult thing to do, you know, as that translates into the boundary. Um, I think he just has, he's just got a lot of versatility. Um, Made some plays last game blitzing for us, right? So I think he's a he can be a a real factor um, in the blitz game also. Is this secondary better set up to as much as you'll miss Lathan, Is it better set up to absorb a loss like this at this stage of the season than it was a year ago? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean that's you know Lathan's a part of it. He's a part of us, but um, yeah, we're we're. We're better set up. We have more versatility and uh, more experience. And guys just understand the system so they can fit in different places. Uh, far left, uh, Joe Nugent, WCMH. What have you noticed about Minnesota's commitment to run the ball? <coughs> to run the ball? What's the challenge of facing a team that just wants to pound away from the game? Yeah, similar to Rutgers. Um, they do a great job. Uh, managing the drives, you know, and, um, you know, taking it down all the way to, what, fourth and short, right? I think they're the, uh, they're the best fourth down conversion team in the country, you know. They stole that play from my Eagles. You know, they do that tush-push thing, you know. But uh, we got... We got burnt on that uh, fumble ruski too under that, so you got to be careful. But yeah, I just think they do a good job of managing the game, controlling the ball, taking the play clock, play clock down. So we have to stay efficient, stay ahead, of, stay ahead of the sticks. Third, fourth row, far right, Andy Baxter, Letterman Row. Uh, Jim, it looks like Jahad Carter was back on the field defensively. Uh, we're late and out right now. I know Sonny's there, but does it help to have the depth of Jihad too? Yes, because um, Sonny's have is going to have to do uh, more things as we move forward here. So it's not going to be as simple as saying, "Okay, Sonny, you're you're back there, and that's where you're going to be." There's going to be some moving parts. You know, Sonny's going to have to be in other places too um, as we face different sets and personnel grouping. So we need Jihad. Jeremy Birmingham. Uh, the Jim, Jim, I don't want to put any one, one person on the spot, but are you as disappointed in Bill Landis as I am that whenever you talk about the Eagles, he doesn't say go birds? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I didn't want to bring it up because I didn't want to call him out, but now that you brought it up, I, we'll I, I well, I know, but he doesn't. I don't get anything, I don't get anything back. Cleared that up, but uh, Cody Simon obviously playing a lot in the middle on Saturday, not knowing what 
Tommy's situation is for this week. How comfortable are you with what you saw from Cody, not just against another run-heavy team like Minnesota, but potentially a, a Saturday was an audition really for the future? Yeah, I'm very comfortable with Cody. Cody not only plays well, but he manages the game like Tommy does. You know, he's got that that kind of brain and that kind of football intelligence. So um, we need them both. We need them both, you know, as we come down the stretch here. We need to have the ability to put them in different places. Sorry about that. Yeah. Steven Means, Cleveland .com. When you guys put Malik out there earlier this year, it didn't necessarily go as well as it did this time along. Just when you watch him back on the film, what did you like about what Malik gave you? Ready is he to be in that situation in that moment if you need him? Yeah, I thought he wasn't um, as wide-eyed as he was the first time. I mean, you know, you that's tough um, for a true freshman, particularly at a safety position. There are checks involved. There are formations. There are a variety of – there are all kind of things that can go – that can happen. So, yeah, I thought he, uh, you know, had his emotions under control and um, – you know, he's a guy that we've seen from the beginning in practice. Like, he always is around the ball. You know, he's one of those guys in practice. If you you want to see people <clears throat> coming up with interceptions in practice, you know, you know that famous coaching thing that I'm sure you guys and men and women have done it with your kids. Catch the ball! You know what I mean? Like, that's a that's a coaching thing, right? Catch the ball, you know. But, it, 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 you know, um, He's one of those guys. Like, there's certain guys. Malik has it, you know, where he's just always around the ball in practice, and he, and he, and he catches the ball, you know. So um, to see him now transition to actually playing the game, you know, in all aspects and being able to manage it from the uh, safety position, that's good for him and good for us. Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Seems like Ty Hamilton has taken a step forward these last couple weeks in terms of making more game-changing plays. Have you seen anything different from him here recently? I haven't seen anything different. I mean, I've been trying to say it all along. You know, I guess maybe Ty Leak um, gets a lot of the attention, and, and deservedly so. But I've been saying it all year long. Our defensive tackles have been making more plays in the running game um, that makes your defense better. It makes your defense better. You know, it's one thing for your defensive tackles to take, use up blocks and use up gaps. It's another thing when they're actually making tackles. So Ty's doing that too. Austin Ward, the Bobcat. Jim, when you guys have a conversation with Tommy and tell him that he's not going to play a game, is he more talkative or did he just say, yeah, okay? Did he fight for it? Yeah, Tommy fights all the time. He, he fights all the time. He, um, he fought to play, you know. He could have played, um, but we felt it was his be in his best interest and our best interest that he, you know, takes his time getting back from this injury. Yes, yeah, so he probably had some extra grunts, you know, last week because he couldn't play than his normal single grunts. He probably went to two or three grunts. Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. I'll follow that. Uh, in certain statistical categories, turnovers, sacks, kind of the flashy ones, you guys are, you know, towards the bottom of the list. But, you, but, but what matters is, is the success you've had. I'm going to say it seems like such a change in what your reputation would suggest. And you talked about this a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. But how much of that is, is – this is we've got talent, and I don't have to kind of do that stuff because I can just let these guys put them in a position and let them play. Right. Yeah, I think you know we've, <clears throat> like you said, we've uh, or I have adjusted, adapted to the talent, the situation, the program, um, doing what's in the best interest of the defense, the team to win games and, <clears throat> you know, to produce a uh, top five defense. You said it from the beginning. You know, you're at the Ohio State. You should have a top five defense. So what's what's a top five defense? Is it 
top five in those categories because I've been there. I've been top five in those categories, but I don't think we were very good. I don't know how good we were, you know, but it was, it was like you said, flashy. And um, I just, th I just feel like it, it's, it is what it is. And, and we need to keep working on those things um, that are working for us, you know, to put it easy and avoid the temptation to try to go after the flashy play and, and, and you know, maybe expose yourself somewhere else. And how much of that is geared toward Michigan and then what happened last year and saying, okay, we're going to make sure we don't have those kind of breakdowns. We're going to, not that you're, it's a one game season, but, but you're gearing toward that all year. Gearing towards the matchup games, right? Coach Day always calls them the matchup games. And we've had a couple already, right? So gearing towards the matchup, matchup games where um, we were not successful last year and mainly because of explosive plays. So... Uh, you know, through a lot of study and a, and a lot of planning, um, yeah, I think you're seeing the benefits of that now. Our left, Steve Hellwagon, 24-7 Sports. Yeah, Coach, uh, last week you talked a little bit about Rutgers uh, and how they were able to, to run the ball. Effectively, Michigan State came out of the gate. I think they had a 20 and 11 and a 27 there in the first two series. But after that, you guys made some type of – Adjustment, physical, X and O's, whatever it may have been. Just uh, if you can talk a little bit about how important that is, identifying that early in the game and making those changes, I guess, to, to get those stops. Yeah, I didn't like that we gave that <clears throat> those plays up early. I know which ones you're talking about. Um, yeah, I like to say, yes, yeah, I always tell the players all their mistakes are on me on game day. So it was it was my fault. I just started making better calls. But I mean, the adjustments in the college game are everything because things change so much week to week. A variety of offenses that you see and things. And then um, you may spend time in practice on one thing and they do something else or, you know, they're studying you while you're studying them. So early on, maybe they have seen a couple things that you need to fix. So the fact that we can make those adjustments successful on the field happen in real time, that's a big deal. I think it's really a, a key part of uh, any success we've had. Are you confident in the physicality of this front seven, for lack of a better term, just front six and a half, however you want to put it, that when you get to these matchup games, which – even this week, I mean, there's going to be a time where you're going to have to, to match up with them physically as well. But uh, are you confident in, in that going forward? That's going to be there to, to, make, to, to contain what the other team's going to bring? Yes. Next question. Hey, what, <laughs> what, what makes you so confident in that? Um, you know, you've you got a body of work. Right, right, right. You... Um, You have players that are hungry. You have players that, uh, you know, all this in in college football at the highest level, it just goes so much back to what you've done from February onward and what Coach Mick has done and all the strength coaches have done in the weight room. You know, it's not – it's it's – it's real in college football because we're still in the developmental process. So um, you see the off season, you see the way the guys compete, and then you, you put it on film <clears throat> and you believe. Don Gerben, Buckeye Idol. Jim, with the idea that you have to be playing your best ball in November, are, is your defense doing that right now? <clears throat> I'd say so. I'd say so. We gave up, um, I think it was two explosive plays last game. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> so I, I, I would say yes. But, you know, you, you, you have to keep getting better. I mean, that's the thing, again, about football. I mean, it's 
it's all it's got to always be going like this you know you can't say oh okay we we're playing our best in november so let's just stay at our best because it's always like if you're not moving forward you're moving backward pat murphy 24 7 sports Jim, <clears throat> you talked about cody stepping in physically for uh tommy but who handles all of the things tommy brings that you've talked about this year when he's not on the field cody 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 i mean he's um they have very similar football intelligence. Uh, um, Cody has paid attention from the time I've, I've arrived here and asked questions all the time. Um, actually speaks where Tom, Tommy grunts. I, I had to deal with Cody conversation. Um, but yeah, he's, he's got the same kind of mind, the same football vision. Davis, don't look at that. On Saturday, Ryan mentioned Calvin Simpson Hunt as a guy who flashed in the second half of that game. Uh, I guess, what have you seen from his development in this first year? He's um, focused, right? Not a big talker, really, you know, good personality, but a positive and a focused kid, you know. You can coach him, you know, um, he doesn't get down when he makes a bad play in practice. You know, he's he's got a positive attitude. And he's fast. He's really, really fast. And that, that helps. Deep left, Caleb Spinner, Buckeyes now on Sports Illustrated. Coach, I asked the same thing to Ryan Day just a little bit ago. But obviously, it's not the primary objective on Saturday, getting the win is. But senior day is certainly a big part of this weekend against Minnesota. What have your fourth, fifth graduate year seniors meant uh, to your defense? Yeah, they mean everything, particularly when you come in as a new coach, right? I mean, it's the older guys, you know, the veterans that um, if they buy into what you're saying, then um, you have a real chance. You know, to get the things implemented that you that you need to do. So, um, the, these guys have been great to me, and I have not been the easiest person to deal with. But they've been really um, responsive, really coachable, um, interested in learning, and uh, yeah, we'll miss them. Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Jim, you talked about Tommy's personality, his grunts. He's not a, obviously not a guy. I mean, a few words. What, what effect, over, now that you've, this is the second year with like, having your middle linebacker with that kind of personality, how has it shaped just the whole defensive guy? Maybe yeah, I think it's, you're, it's a good point, right? I think it, um, we've, we've become, in a large way, we've become really businesslike, really businesslike, really accountable you know, really focused, like not a lot of, uh, uh, you know, not a lot of uh, talk, debate, not a lot of debate, you know, kind of like here are the facts, here's what's happening, how do we fix it, let's go out and kick ass, you know, because that's how Tommy is, you know, and you're right, it has it had a big effect on everything. Is that your ideal scenario? Is it just the way Tommy is? Or yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. As a, sometimes, if you have an ideal scenario as a coach, you know, you end up trying to push the squad one way or another. I think you you see what's there, and and um, <clears throat> you just want leadership. You want leadership, and his happens to be a certain way, and you know, people have bought into that. They respect him, and that's just kind of how our personality has become. Cameron T. Robinson, the athletic. Jim, obviously, when defenses prepare for a offense, the goal is contain Marvin. 